What exactly is insulin? What is insulin sensitivity? What is insulin resistance? And how does it affect you when it comes down to storing fat, when it comes down to burning more fat? Well, it has to do with a couple of different hormones, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna focus on insulin because I feel like it's extremely important that you have a solid understanding of what insulin does in the body so that you can understand how you can get the most out of your diet and the most out of your life in general. So first and foremost, insulin is produced by the beta cells within the pancreas. And it's triggered as a response to any kind of food consumption, generally speaking, glucose, okay? So you consume carbohydrates, they get broken down into glucose by your digestive system. And once you have glucose floating around in the bloodstream, insulin opens up the cells to allow the glucose in. Now insulin doesn't just affect specific cells. You see, insulin generally affects both the muscle cells, the liver cells, but it also affects the fat cells as well. And that's the thing, a lot of people don't realize that insulin does affect fat cells and can actually cause them to store more free fatty acids and get bigger and get larger. That's one of the biggest problems that we face today. So now we know that insulin's job is to take that blood glucose and put it into the cell for energy. Well, if insulin isn't functioning well, then of course we have too much blood glucose, which can lead to a lot of different things. Which leads me into two things I wanna talk about, insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. But hear me out through the entirety of this video because I'm going to break down exactly what you can do to start getting your insulin working in your favor so you can get in the best shape of your life. Okay. So if you don't produce enough insulin, or if your cells are immune to insulin and don't respond well to it, that leaves you with a lot of excess glucose in the bloodstream. Well, what can that lead to? It can lead to storage. So believe it or not, insulin can also regulate what is stored as fat and what is stored in the cells. So let's focus on insulin resistance for a second because it plays a role. Insulin resistance is when you are so accustomed to having insulin at so many different times of the day that your body stops responding to it or slows down in terms of response to it. In fact, there was even a study that took a look at some interesting stuff. The Journal of Diabetes and Its Complication did a two-part study, and ultimately what they found over the course of two separate time periods was about 32 to 33% of all people are insulin resistant. Not necessarily just diabetics, but all people. Now, how does this play into you? Well, most of the time, we just think of diabetics as being insulin resistant. But the fact is, you can become somewhat insulin resistant without being diabetic. And that can lead to a lot of things, like poor absorption of nutrients, poor glucose delivery, and of course, elevated blood glucose, which leads to a multitude of different things. But what about for fat storage, okay? You see, when your body doesn't respond well to insulin, your pancreas has to produce more of it. And this is the thing that people don't always talk about. The more insulin that your body has to produce, the less fat burning that occurs. Every single time that you eat something, you're generally secreting insulin, unless you're only eating high protein, high fat. Okay, but generally speaking, you're always producing insulin when you eat. Well, this insulin shuts off the fat burning mechanism within your body. And when that happens, well, do the math. You're not burning fat. So if your body has to consistently produce more and more insulin because it's trying to respond to the fact that your cells are insulin resistant, well, there you go. Your body's never really getting into that optimal fat burning stage. Now, what exactly is causing this insulin resistance? Well, for one, it's just eating too many calories flat out. You're constantly consuming food, so your body's becoming immune to the insulin, the insulin that's supposed to let the sugar into the cell. So a lot of scientists believe that it has to do with something known as intramyocellular fat accumulation. What this is, is fatty acid metabolites that build up inside the muscle cells that basically block the absorption of insulin. How does this happen? Well, years of combining fats and carbohydrates together will cause this. Every time you spike your insulin with a high sugar or carbohydrate rich food, and you have fat in the equation as well, i.e. something like a donut, you're opening up the muscle cell to insulin and glucose, but you're also opening it up to fat. Those fatty acids go into the muscle cell and there you have it. You have that intramyocellular fatty acid accumulation, making it so that the cell does not respond well to insulin. Therefore, next time you eat, your body has to produce more and more and more insulin. Think of it as like a door to a building that just gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. And in order to batter it down, you need a bigger battering ram. That's the way insulin in your cells work. So that leads me to the next side of the equation, which is insulin sensitivity. It's essentially the opposite of insulin resistance. I want you to think of it like this. 
If insulin resistance is a super, super thick door that barely lets anything in unless you have a big battery ram, then being insulin sensitive is like barely having a screen door. It allows the cell to absorb things that you eat with very, very little resistance, okay? Very, very little force is required. Very little amounts of insulin. Why is this a good thing? Well, the more sensitive to insulin that you are, the less insulin you produce, the less insulin you produce, the more fat you're able to burn. Because remember, it's very, very hard, if not impossible, for you to burn fat in the presence of insulin. So if that's the case, you wanna keep your insulin levels as low as possible. Then, when you do consume food, your body's gonna absorb it, your cells are gonna absorb it, and you're going to feel and look a heck of a lot better. So this is great. You now know what insulin is, you know what insulin resistance is, and you know what insulin sensitivity is. But how do you take action and put a plan into effect here? Well, I've got a couple of solutions for you. One is going to be intermittent fasting now and then. Okay, simply by reducing the amount of food that you consume and going periods of time where you're not consuming food, it allows those beta cells in the pancreas to relax a little bit, but it also allows the intramyocellular fatty acids that have accumulated to leave the cell, start being burned, so that the cell can be more receptive to insulin. Now, another thing that you can do is temporary carbohydrate fasting. Basically, a short stint of ketosis that doesn't even put you fully into ketosis. You can go two to three days of restricting carbs as much as you possibly can, keeping fats moderately high, basically just allowing yourself to become more insulin sensitive. Now, a perfect example, a lot of bodybuilders or fitness competitors do this, but they don't generally know the science as to why they're doing it. Basically, what you're doing is you're depleting just enough so that your body can rebound and be a lot more sensitive. You can apply this in your everyday life by doing a carb starvation for really just two or three days out of the course of a month. So there's a couple of tips that you can use to get the most out of your insulin and use it to your advantage. So I hope that this clears some things up and as always, make sure you comment and let me know what videos you wanna see in the future so that you can make sure you're getting the most out of your gym time, your kitchen time, your family time, and your lifetime. I'll see you soon. So whenever you're breaking your fast or whenever you're in ketosis, you know I'm a huge proponent of bone broth. And I've talked about it in other videos, but my good friend Justin over at Kettle and Fire, one of the co-founders and owners of Kettle and Fire, has definitely hooked it up. So if you use the code THOMAS20 in the link in the description, you'll be able to get some of the bone broth that I've been a big fan of simply because it has apple cider vinegar already in it. So it enhances the nutrient uptake, enhances the mineral uptake, and overall makes it taste a lot better than most bone broths out there. So make sure you check them out, and as always, Keep it locked in here on Kettle and Fire and Thomas DeLauer. See you soon.